Congratulations to one of our students who actually purchased their newest house. But I'm gonna tell you one huge mistake that he made um, and I'm gonna see if I can help you guys understand the basics of loans when it comes to properties. Stay tuned for this one. What's up guys, it's your boy Sawan Belcher. This is me taking action. Um, I've done over 300 real estate transactions and typically on this channel, we talk about business, finance, and real estate investing. I mean, really how to do uh, as many deals as you wanna do, how to make as much money as you want during a 30 day period of time while we cherry pick the very best real estate deals for ourselves. Shout out, shout out to my boy, he did an awesome job. He actually overbid me um, you know, on this particular property. But seriously, this house is like a three bedroom, one bath. I mean, ARV is like 135, 140 on a good day. Uh, he's putting about $25,000 in work in it. Um, so essentially, all in all, he's gonna be right at, what's that, 115? No, he's gonna be right at 115 in um, on his rehab budget. And like I said, property's worth like 140. Let's call it 140. But here, here's, the, here's the main thing that he messed up on. Great job, I will say he outbid me and he ended up getting the deal. That's the first thing. If you can structure a deal and uh, better than someone else and get the deal, then amen, go for that. But when you get the loan, you need to make sure it's the right loan for you. How he was able to outbid me is he, en he ended up getting an FHA loan. Okay, he ended up getting, so that's an owner-occupied loan. One of the downfalls to getting an occupied loan is you have to live in the property for a year before you can rent it out. Okay, because they're owner occupied loans, they're government backed loans. During that first year, you're not supposed to rent out the property. I'm not saying that you can't, but you're not supposed to rent out the property during that first year because of the loan type that you have. And that's one of the stipulations of this loan type. Now, legally, this is called mortgage fraud, which is a huge deal if you do that during this time. But legally, you can definitely buy property with three and a half percent down, live in that property for a year, and then move out of that property and turn around and rent it out uh, while you have a lower monthly payment, making a higher rent. Perfect if that's your strategy. The only reason why it wasn't perfect for him is because he didn't know that when he got into the deal. So after he closed, he had to move all of his personal information from his current house to this new house and essentially move his whole life from his current house to, <laughs> to now his new house and move his life there and he was not planning for it. Now, I will say if he would have planned for this, this would have been perfect. But since he didn't plan for it, it's definitely just a little inconvenience, but a great way to buy a property. So that's an FHA loan. Just remember, if you ever get an FHA loan, okay, these are meant to be owner occupied loans not for uh, real estate investing. So you will have to live in the property for some time, uh, even up to five years. Just know what it says in your, uh, in your mortgage terms. The next kind of loan that you guys can get for your real estate investing deal to help structure the best deals where you can make money right now, okay, uh, is gonna be a conventional loan. Now, conventional loans are not government-backed loans. They're typically loans that stay in-house with whoever that lender is. Most of the time with an FHA loan, there's an originator. After the loan is originated, it gets sold to the government, Freddie, Fannie, and then has like a servicing company. Uh, with these conventional loans, that bank who originates the loan holds it in house. Uh, now the benefit to this is you typically don't have any PMI, any private mortgage insurance on these loans. So your monthly payments tend to be lower. And of course, since you put such a large amount down, because they typically want 20 to 25% down, or 30% in equity or more, you typically uh, end up having a lower monthly payment. Now on the downside, you know, since it's not government backed, they're holding this money in house, the interest rates tend to be a little higher. Some people, depending on the mortgage broker you go to or the bank, some people can definitely get interest rates lower on conventional loans. But from my experience, they're typically a little higher than the FHA loans. Okay, that's just from my experience. But definitely a great way to pick up one of these houses. Because I will say on a conventional loan, they're definitely less strict 
and how clean or fixed up the property has to be versus an FHA loan. Now, the next one is a VA loan. Okay, that's another, another government backed loans. I love these because you can get 100% financing if you've ever been in the military or have family, okay, uh, like I think that's first rights to Ken or something, but they'll do 100% of the uh, of the purchase, okay? I believe you just gotta come up with the uh, with the attorney's fees. Currently own a couple of these mortgages subject to right now, so uh, you can pick up VA loans like that. But VA loans are a great strategy because it is government backed and is 100% financing, okay? Now the next way you can finance your next real estate investment is you can use private money. Okay, I like private money, it's definitely one of my favorites. Private money simply means there's an agreement between me and the person who has the money. We have our attorney write up the deed of trust and the, our promissory note privately, and it's recorded on the day of closing. We literally make an agreement that this person is gonna lend me the funds, they're gonna become the mortgage, I'm gonna become the owner. Uh, so I, I retain 100% of the ownership, and they, uh, they're in a first, second, or third position all right depending on where you have them depending on how you structure your deal um so that so that way their um, money is collateralized by the property third way is a hard money company and it's very similar to private money but there's one person the owner of the private money company excuse me hard money company he goes out finds the people that have the liquid puts all that money in one pot and then finds you the person who needs it they call that hard money so essentially this guy is just brokering somebody else's money and charging big origination points um you know he's making the spread on the interest rate so if he's getting the money at eight percent he's lending it to you at 15. does hard money work for sure yes have i ever used it no i typically stay in the private money realm okay now if you guys want to learn how the hard money companies are, are finding private money guys or how the bank are using deposits to uh, lend out to everyone else i i honestly go through this how to make sure you have the right deal, how to analyze these deals, how to structure your notes the right way on the weekly coaching calls, okay? Literally every Sunday, other than major holidays and when I need to get a skating break, but every Sunday <laughs> at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, there's about 20 to 30 active real estate investors that all jump on a call and we go over um, a subject we actually congratulate everybody who got a, uh, a deal on a contract or collected an EMD, but we also share resources inside of that group every Sunday at 9 p.m. So I'm gonna leave the weekly coaching call links for you. It's only $50 a month, okay? Now, actually, I'm gonna share this video with you, um, with, with uh, this interview with Jake. I mean, he was one of the first students who invested in the weekly coaching calls. At that, at that time, it was $250. But he shares in this video how he used that $250 investment and turned it into nine rental properties in less than 24 months. You guys have an amazing day. Peace.